If you want legendary service, if you, you want, want sweeter discounts, discount, shop on the Saved by bundling auto and home with insurance. Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me guys, it works. Everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all, it is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Oh, now it's going. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no, it's all good. With your slow ass Wi Fi. Yeah, or no Wi Fi. Well, I mean, I guess the no Wi-Fi. It just started doing this yesterday. I don't know. But it took so long about got sleepy. What? So you took so long I about got tired. I'm sorry. Sleepy. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. you're good. I was wondering what was taking forever. I was like, damn, man, does it really take that long? No, I never had an app load or take that long to load. I don't know. Who are you with? Verizon or? Uh, Straight Talk. So it's just like through Walmart. Ah, uh, Straight Talk could just... be why. I mean, the uh, is there five G over there uh, in the town that you're at? Uh, it's LTE. Well, I mean, either way, LTE shouldn't have taken that long. Maybe it's my phone going downhill. What can do? Because well, even what like, phone do you right? have? Uh, iPhone 10. They still have the 10? Wow. I've I mean, like live in the past, okay? <laughs> it's going strong. I mean, I got the 14 Pro Max, so. Dang. I was looking at one. I wanted one, but. I, don't I got it for, I got it for 300 with T-Mobile. Oh, yeah. That's no. why I did it. I'm like, it, because if, uh, regular price, I'm like, I'm not. I'm not spending that pretty penny. I mean, granted, I mean, I guess I'm financing it, but I'm like, a mm, uh, thousand. Well, the one that I got would have been thirteen hundred a month, and and I was doing the math. I'm like, well, I think it was like fifty a month. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I really want to be doing that. But then once I saw, hey, you know, trading. If you've already paid half of your old phone off. Um, you can trade in for the new one and you like as a like as a like full new thing i'm like oh i was about halfway so i'm like oh okay and because of the deal Mm -hmm. i got about a thousand off so and it's only i think less than 10 bucks a month so i'm like i'll do that i would rather do that than than the 50 a month yeah i would too but i've always just stuck to like the no contract straight talk. So I've never had those deals, which kind of sucks. But yeah, I mean, it all just depends. I mean, I have T Mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it all just depends on the person. I mean, I wouldn't mind using uh, straight talk or uh, T Mobile prepaid. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I've, I've liked where if I want a phone, it's not like I have to save the money to buy that new phone, yeah. Like full price, so I'd like if I can finance it. Cause again, if I can find a great deal, trade in my old phone and then finance it, I'll be, I'll be okay like that. Rather than like in your case, you have the iPhone 10 and you're like, well, if I sell it, I can't sell it for yeah. even 500. I mean, you could probably sell it for two, three hundred, and then right there, it's like you're. Yeah, and plus, my phone has never failed me. I have dropped it, like, thrown it on accident, and it's still not cracked or anything, so. Damn. I mean, that's how uh, my 13 Pro Max was. Uh, the only thing it had was maybe some scuff marks on the on the edges, but the screen was fine. No scratches, nothing, because I always keep a screen protector. Mm-hmm. Uh, my back, cameras, nothing. Everything was good. And so... Yeah. 
I was like, fuck it. I'll... I, I told my girlfriend, it, it, it irritates me when people don't take care of their electronics. Like, when I see them throw it and shit, I'm like, uh-uh. No, no. <laughs> at me, at the gym. <laughs> oh yeah, with the, at the gym, I, like, place it down slowly. Or if I might just keep it in my pocket. But I'm like, I'm, I will see people just, oh, they pick a song, boom, just throw it. I'm like, no. Because what if you drop the weight on it? That shit's done. Even yeah. if it's a five-pound weight, it's done. That's true. I make sure it's out of the way, but when I drop it between sets, I just, hopefully it lives. <laughs> so bad. I know. I can't do that. What made you move to Idaho? The potato um, state. The potatoes. I'm actually dating someone named Spud. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, when that, when I said I was uh, trying to make sure you were all active, because uh, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Cause I was just, again. I mean, I want to say my podcast. I guess you can still say it's kind of relatively new. Uh, I started it June or July of this year. <laughs> And it was, like, one of those things where people are like, oh, hey, you know, congratulations. Yeah, I'll go on it for, like, the first three episodes. And then it just, like, dies down because they're like, ah, like, they don't, like, you know, most people don't think you know, you're going to stick to it. I don't yeah. even, I didn't even think I was going to stick to it. And so, I mean, I've gotten a lot of rejections, a lot of just red messages delivered. So I'm like, I just went through Facebook. I'm like, okay, who the hell can I, can I text? And... Um, I just kept going. I'm like, let me see if Riley, I mean, I know she has a boyfriend, but I, I, I just want to make sure if everything is okay. And, yeah. and, yeah, but, and like, just, awesome, so. yeah, and, and when I was like, when I went through your Facebook, I'm like, mm, I mean, just making sure every, she was, you were still active. Cause that's probably why a lot of people that I wanted to get. Uh, leave me on delivered because they probably don't have messenger downloaded i mean they probably barely use uh facebook or instagram a lot so i'm like well who can i try to get and i'm like well i know everyone uses tiktok so like let me uh, look her up on tiktok yeah bam caught you i'm like okay cool she has good amount of likes so that's how i know she's still active and i saw your recent one was from a couple days ago i'm like okay so I, she's still active. Let me, yeah. let me be a smart not. ass. Still here. <laughs> I'm like, let me be a smart ass and comment. Remember to wash your hands. It took me so long to realize. I was like, what? I was so confused. And then Spud looked at it. He's like, the sign on the mirror says wash your hands, dummy. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you didn't was- even know. You didn't think that was me? Well, I didn't know. I didn't understand what you were referencing in my TikTok. That's what. Well, I know, but the account, the like, oh, uh, did you didn't I, know that it was me? Once I viewed it, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and once I sent you the message, I'm like, I'm the one that yeah. did this on your TikTok. Yeah, no, it all clicked. But I yeah, used but... to get a lot of likes on my TikToks, not anymore. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's it's the algorithm. It's just. I mean, it just depends on what you're going to put out there. I mean, yeah, true. just like with the podcast average, I get like four listens, but sometimes uh, I know, I think it's Adams, Adam Moreno's. I think, mm-hmm. you know, I think his guy like 15, 17. And I'm like, where the hell did this come from? And then the next one was like, like four, and then the next one was like eleven. So I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's confusing, but <laughs> yeah, it's just because but... last time I re- we've seen each other was when you left Walmart to go to Murdoch's. How did that go? How was Murdoch's? Oh man, I'm glad I I like Walmart kind of, but I'm glad I left. Uh, Murdoch's is like a really good opportunity for me. Uh, I actually, I did really well, and I liked my job, and I found out I'm a really good people person, and I have good communication skills, like, because a lot of people would come to me for, like, dress fit, like, dress recommendations, so mm-hmm. I was able to help them out, and then I was able just to, like, get on a more personal connection, because I like to mm-hmm. talk, and people like to listen, 
And so that was good. And then I worked there for till I went to college, my freshman or my sophomore year. Sorry, I just got a text. Anyway, oh, you're good. So then I quit. I worked there for eight months. Then I went to Cheyenne, Wyoming, for college. Got my associates in psychology there. And then I worked at a furniture western store there. And also, I was like a bar manager for this guy. That this guy was like some really expensive horses. Shit. Yeah, it was really cool. I liked a it. barn manager? Look at the motherfucker. I uh, know. <laughs> a car pusher to a barn manager? Uh, but leveling up, I see. <laughs> and then I ended up coming back home to Nebraska, like Scott's Bluffs. And then I was a pharmacy technician during the summer until I moved to Idaho. Where at? Like, we're f- for a pharmacy tech? <laughs> or was inter- that cut off? Uh, the farm, or oh my goodness, I talk. The hospital inpatient pharmacy. Mm. Yeah. Out of all those jobs, which one did you like the most? Honestly, the pharmacy tech job. Really? Why don't you stick to it? Well, I wanted to be a pharmacy tech up in Idaho, but nobody was hiring, like, in the inpatient setting. So, I became a CNA. Uh, that's what you're doing over there right now? CNA? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are it's you... Good work, but, oh, gosh. Are you uh, more of, like, the morning uh, CNA? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 12-hour shifts or no? No, eight hours. But today I had oh. to work ten hours because I'm too nice. Because <laughs> I remember uh, a lot of people back in Bluffs when, in a way, they'd kind of make that their identity. Um, when they'd say, oh, yeah, I've, I had to work a 12-hour shift, like, five days in a row. Uh, and it's, like, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Like, ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I never got to the to the health part of of that. And I worked at Walgreens, and when I had to cashier ish in a way, kind of just help them in the window and shit like that. I would look at all the medicines. I would look at the computers. I'm like, I don't know what the hell any of this means, like the medicine wise. Like people would ask me, so how many doses am I supposed to take? How what's this or uh, my I know my doctor recommended me getting a different medication. Like, is it th- is it this and blah blah blah? I'm like, God, I, I don't even know how to fucking pronounce this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you're asking the wrong person. I don't know. Yeah, I used to get made fun of for how I had pronounced some of the medicines, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hell, for a, for the longest time, for like ibuprofen. Uh, when I saw how, when it, when I first saw the word, uh, I'm like, how, how does that make sense of calling it ibuprofen? Yeah. Like, and then you got the brand names and then you got like the actual names and like in the hospital, the pharmacists want you to use like the real name and then the nurses all use the brand names. So like they'll ask you for like, I don't know, like ibuprofen, they'll say like, can we have some ibuprofen? And I'll be like, you mean acetaminophene? Or like, I don't even know if that's the right one. But anyways, like, you get it? Like, there was no mm-hmm. difference between, like, communication, which was kind of confusing. But it's okay. With your time there, because you know how bad the, how bad rep that hospital gets in uh, Scott's Bluff. Uh, like, was, like, did you have a good time there? Oh, I mean, other than your work, like, just the yeah. people there. I had really good coworkers. I I loved them. Like they made the job. And then the pharmacists, like, yeah, they have like a higher degree and they have been to school a lot longer and they get paid a lot more. But they like still treat us like they treat treated all the techs as equals, which I really liked. It wasn't like because I have a higher degree and I like this person yeah. more. They're kind of the ones I care about the most and you new people yeah no they had a different connection with us than like say doctors do with nurses like doctors are Mm -hmm. up and boss nurses around but like Mm -hmm. for techs and pharmacists like we work equal i don't know that's what i really liked 
I thought it was at Walgreens too. Uh, the techs and uh, and the pharmacists. There, some some pharmacy techs were cool. Some were kind of bitchy. Um, yeah. Some, but most were cool. The same with the pharmacists. The pharmacists were, mm-hmm. you know, they were cool. And cause then after Walgreens, I went to Target, and I was fulfillment. So like OGP in a way. Uh, and it wasn't bad, but they care about the numbers way too much. And not only that, but um, a lot of the uh, people that were in fulfillment, just like high school, you have your own little groups of high school where you got the popular kids, you got the sports kids, you got the band nerds and shit like that. That's how it was there. You had basically the popular coworkers, the one that not only – were friends with each other but were friends with management so they were everyone was chill there uh, with you were in that group but if you weren't then it's a different story um so it was and that was most of them so unless you were in their group you were kind of just left out like you like really they didn't give a shit about you in a way and so yeah and because i mean i my most of them were like college students, college high school students, mm-hmm. and most um, a good chunk of them were girls. So it's not like you know, I was gonna try to be friends with girls. I mean that'd be a little bit weird, yeah. especially since I also have a girlfriend. So that'd be a little bit weird if I tried to be friends with them. But even the guys, they were, I guess in a way, kind of like a little cocky too. Kind of like yeah, we got these. We're friends with the girls, like. Yeah. You're not cool like us. Like, don't even talk to me. It's like, bro, you work out with Target. Chill. I hate when people bring like that high school dynamic into like adult life. Like, it's. I know. Especially it's especially when it's like one of the lower end tiers. Like, if you're like just a regular associate, it's all of us. It's like, relax. We all get paid the same, dude. Like, chill. Yes. Like, I could understand if maybe you're a manager. You know, kind of have that empowerment but you get paid 15 just like i do chill yeah. Yeah. and like from a customer point of view they don't care like where you rank they just want your help yeah they don't yeah, yeah. it because you know some some customers can be like that where they want the manager to explain what you just explained to them and some say you know you're knowledgeable you know what you're saying i trust you even though you're an associate and that's why um, I'm trying to get my uh, real estate license. Um, and so uh, when I was talking, because uh, I, again, I work back at Walmart only because of the flexibility, uh, the flexibility and because how tar- again, I didn't mind the job at Target. Um, the people were eh, but the it was when they were scheduling me because it was anywhere from either four in the morning. So 4 a.m. to 12.30 or 6 a.m. to 2.30. And I'm like, I'm up early as hell. And on my day off, it doesn't feel like a day off because I know even like if my body's so used to waking up early, I wake up at 5.30, 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be tired by 8 p.m., 9 p.m. or even 7. And I'm like, well, I it doesn't feel like a full day because I know I have to be up by 3 to shower and everything and then leave. So I didn't really like how my days off were. Yeah. And yeah, so, and because, I mean, um, it, if I want to, for my real estate license, you know, being an eight, once I'm an agent and whatnot, um, if I get closing positions and, but then be, because then if my job is flexible with that, I can spend a majority of the day obviously trying to get business and then go work just so I have money for bills. Yeah. Compared to if, if I'm like, yeah, I mean, compared to if I'm like four to 1230 or six to 230, it's like, yes, I can try to make business once I'm off of work, but most people it's going to, I'll have a better time to get people, I mean, I guess I can get them when I'm off of work, when they're off work too, yeah. around like four or five. Um, 
but a lot of people will just want to get home, cook, do whatever they need to. They kind of don't want, any, they don't want anything to do with with yeah. people sometimes. So it's like, I guess in a way you can win lose maybe. I don't know, but yeah, it's just it's and one of those things. Exerting your energy and like something that you actually want to be successful is important. Yeah, because it's not like a job where, uh, yes, you can put your heart and soul, but then you got to remind yourself, I'm getting paid is the same as everyone, and a lot of these people aren't putting the same amount of work that I am. So, you know, like, some, like, to me, it's like, let me dial it down a little. Like, let me let me not be the, the hard ass, the try hard, because we all get paid the same, and it only makes me look, it makes us look good not me makes us look good if that one person is trying the hardest and Mm -hmm. so i'm like if i if i know my hard work will pay off is one i mean you got to work for yourself so if i know it'll pay off yeah let me get a career where it can pay off and Mm -hmm. if i have that if i've had that customer relationship through retail i'm like it's, going yeah. into going into real estate, I know how to create that relationship with clients because I've had to deal with it in retail compared to because uh, I've I've talked to some people and you know some joined in their forties, fifties, late thirties, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, I've already worked in real estate. I was a property manager for this apartment complex. I was an appraiser, so they've already been in that side. But they they haven't really had the one on one customer experience. Yeah. That is like the one number one key when it comes to real estate because you may know the back end, but how do you get? But how do you be, create that relationship? Yeah, and that's the most important thing. Like, if you want to sell because, a house, you have to always yeah. build the relationship. So. Yeah, because if you can't build that relationship with the client, if let's say you know how to do everything else, you know how to give them the info of of the appraisals, the rates, everything, because that let's say that was your job before, but you don't know how to create a relationship, they might say, well, we, we'll talk with this person who is caring to help us because they know how to create that relationship and then send them over to the title company, to the bank or whatever, rather than this person that only knows that end but doesn't know how to create a relationship. I don't know. I mean, that's... And plus a lot of people, a lot of those type of people, they are used to like high paychecks. So that a lot of them are used to, they want, they're only there for the paycheck for that commission check. Cause yeah. if you're going to make a, an easy seven, eight K check selling this one house, it's going to show so yeah. clients, more clients are going to see it when they, when you're doing it for the money, they're going to, they're going to read it quickly. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to see it. Yeah. And I don't know. That'll they kill can you. Connect with the house if you can't connect with them, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because if again, um, if you create that customer relationship, help them like they're your best friend, saying, you know, I want a house that's like this, like the, like you're helping them find a house, and whatever, and then you can do that. Or as a seller point, you want to help someone sell the house. It's like okay, well, who are who are the types of people that we can attract with this house and one not and I mean I don't know. How long is it gonna take for you to get your real estate license? Or, well, or... it it kind of depends on the person. Um, I the classes uh, a, average is like two to four months. Uh, oh. If you if you do it online, you can you know at your own pace, and then you pass the classes, and then after passing the classes, you then have to study for the test. You have two tests, the general real estate and then the state specified real estate. And it's your first time, it's $300 because you have to register with the commission. You have to get like your fingerprints and everything because you're, they see that as a professional license. Yeah. Like teachers were there. Like when I went, I had two teachers that were there because they also had to get a license. So. That 150 goes to the fingerprints. The other 150 goes to the test. And every time you fail the test, you have to pay 150 every single time to mm-hmm. retake the test. For and study. yeah. And so that's what I mean. I failed the first time 
only because I was so excited, I just kind of rushed into it. Mm. I really, I, I learned, but I didn't really learn. Mm. So when it came to the test, I, I didn't do as bad as I thought, but I wasn't close to passing. Do you have to go do the classes again or no? Oh, no, you just uh, have to pay the 150 fee to the commission, and then you just go retake the test. Oh, okay. And when do you retake it? Well, I have to pay the 150 first. Because oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been trying to just study a lot, because once I, I got this one program that, that a lot of people uh, use, I realized, damn, I shouldn't have rushed quick into this. Yeah. Because even now, I, I still get bad scores. I'm like, shit. But I'm more confident this time than before. Because before, no. I My first couple of times, I was doing shit. I'm like, yeah, this is probably why I shouldn't just have uh, yeah. been too excited and gone. That's okay. At least you learned. And now you'll learn more because you have to. Yeah. And, I mean, it's kind of... Uh, what I want to do, because I've said this before in other episodes, um, my goal is to uh, be a millionaire by the age of 30, which my birthday will be like the 24th of February. So account to that, uh, like that gives me, what, eight years now? You're going to be 22? 22 in February. And so I'm like, how can I do it? Because college wasn't for me, no matter even though my GPA was high. Yeah. College just wasn't for me. I mean. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't like college either, but I have to. I mean, I I kind of just went in because I went in. I didn't. I chose computer science as uh, my major at UNL. But mm-hmm. again, I just kind of went just to go. I didn't. Yeah. It was interesting, but I, I'm, I wasn't really learning. Yeah, and that's a lot of money just to yeah. have experience. Yeah. So are it, you living in Lincoln then, or like yeah, oh, Lincoln. Lincoln, yeah, uh, temporarily because I wanna because my girlfriend she goes to Southeast the community college here, and um, I do I, once I get my license, I wanna not only obviously you know be an agent here learn real estate uh so then i can obviously invest in real estate but once i have that money uh we can move to colorado we'll try to get my license in colorado too so then i'm licensed both in nebraska and colorado yeah and and so then if i if i ever want to buy anything in in lincoln because of you know unl the Huskers football, which I mean, they suck ass, but the Huskers volleyball. I mean, yeah. if I can buy a, if I can buy a condo downtown, Airbnb it. How many people would rather get that than then, get a hotel? Because oh, yeah. they have everything, and they're walking distance to the college, closer distance, and on game days, Pete, you know, you can just Uber to wherever you need to. I mean, you can do that with a hotel too. But it's going to be pricier. Some people like the, the privateness of an air aid. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, question. This is, what? are you still with Trinity? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm still with her. Good. <laughs> I thought so. But I was... We're like, I think two and a half years strong. Yeah. Because it was, you guys started dating at Walmart, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's. And I always give her shit because our my well my first words to her were, you know, Daniel's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember him. Oh, yeah, last I heard of him, uh, he's a store lead at uh Walmart, I think in Beatrice. Oh. I, I think last I heard, but that was when he left. Cause when we left, I think. I think either like a couple weeks, maybe a month, maybe be, uh, before we left, he left for that position. Did I leave before you guys? You left. Yeah, you left before we did. Okay. Uh, but he left. I th- 
couple weeks, a month maybe, before we left to Lincoln. And yeah, I mean, that's that that was our very first words were Daniel's a dick. And she said, you know what? He is. Uh, for some reason, he really liked me, but he also made fun of me for being a hick. <laughs> he made. <laughs> He made fun of you for being a hick? Yeah, like, one time I went in off of work, and I was just wearing, like, my boots and, like, my heavy coat that's, like, western, I guess. And he's like, mm-hmm. what are you doing, going to chase cows? I was like, what? <laughs> that one. <laughs> You're like, no, that was this morning. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like, no, uh, my girlfriend, she, her funniest moment with uh, about him um did, uh, do you remember cameron um is he a leader no oh uh, no he 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 was a cart but i i think oh, he was no, no, no. i do i do i, do. I was like he was about maybe my height maybe a little yeah. bit taller brown kid yeah yeah uh him uh i think she said she was he uh daniel went went to talk to them for something i think i guess and it was about a designer, the guy who made a panda, you know, like mm-hmm. the song Panda. Yeah. And she said that he started singing it. He put the song on and he started singing it to them or some or something around that nature. I believe that. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Though, if you go into Walmart and stuff, look, all the same people are there. It seems like. Like really? Right. And like. I can't remember her name right now, but Kim, she's still there. Literally all the front leads from the, or the leads, team leads are mm-hmm. still for cash sharing. I don't know. I don't uh, it, know. It, I know you're good. It's weird uh, when, I don't know why, but the vibe in that store to me is weird now. Uh, maybe I, it's because most of the people I worked with aren't there anymore or something but i don't know uh last time we went there uh to scott to just the panhandle Mm -hmm. um i don't know like i went into walmart and i'm like i just have a gut feeling like i shouldn't even be in here anymore i don't know why like no i get that okay like not all the same people but like all the older people are still there yeah i mean i know a lot of the people that i worked with most are most, if not all, are gone. I mean, because yeah. did you hear? Were you there when Karen got fired? No, that happened right after I left. Oh, but you know the story, though, right? Not really. Oh well. In shorter terms, let's just say, um, uh, I think someone was. She thought someone was stealing, um, even though even though they weren't, and so she followed them to their. To their car. Legit follow them to the car. Took picture. I think Cameron took pictures of the license plate. Either she did or Cameron did. And she kept accusing the guy. Hey, you know, you're stealing. Blah, blah, blah. And I guess the cops were called. And, you know, he, he took out the receipt and said, look, I wasn't stealing. And, you know, the cop checked, whatever. And and then obviously because of stuff like that, they have, you know, they have to report it. Then I think. Uh, either the next day or the next couple of days, um, Karen got pulled in to get talked to about that. And Karen lied and said that uh, Anne told on her and told her on the walkie saying, hey, I have a suspicion this guy is stealing. Uh-huh. Even though Anne said no, because Karen followed the guy mm-hmm. out to the car. And so because of that, and I, th- I forgot who it was. Uh, that pitched in and said no, Anne's Anne's innocent. Like I was, I watched it all because they were gonna believe Karen. They were gonna believe Karen and fire Anne. Oh, dang. Yeah, but I I forgot who it was that stepped in and said no. I saw everything. It was Karen that went out there and whatever. And so because of that, the, uh, they walked Karen out. Dang. Yeah. Regardless was... of that situation, I really like Karen. I, she was like, she was like our mother. I mean, yeah, she was. Because when you get her pissed, you know, you know she's pissed. Mm-hmm. And, and when she likes you, like you can tell. <laughs> yeah. 
Is Cassandra still there? Probably not. Yeah. She's the one I hate the most? I believe so. <laughs> she hates me, too. Oh, <laughs> I hate she her. She gives me hugs every day, but some days she'd be, like, super angry, and I'm like, she'd take it out on me on accident. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I think she just hates men because uh, last time I saw her, she just gave me the nastiest look. Really? I was like, the fuck? Like, what did I do? Like. I, I just do not like her. I hate Cassandra. We did so much for that store. It, I don't even know how they survived without us. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, I feel like during during when all of us were there, like not just you and I, but just everyone that we have met, mm-hmm. when we were all there, that was just like the OG crew. That was just what made going working fun. Yeah. Because if you know who's closing, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. We're going to mm-hmm. we're gonna not do shit. Like, we're going to fucking have some fun. Yeah. And then as it just pe- kind of got more serious and not so mm-hmm. fun. And as people kept leaving, like, all the good people started leaving. And they just slowly started getting some new people. And, again, I mean, even though new people, we'd have fun. But then just slowly people just kept leaving and leaving and stuff changed and then it just kind of went downhill and then we moved and uh we uh we still keep in contact with uh with a buddy that still works there and uh he said that it's not the same anymore Who is it? it's uh dylan i don't you don't know him no. but um he said it's it's not the same anymore mm-hmm. it's he said he's he he's a cart pusher. He just goes there, does his thing, and goes home. He's that's it's not I, like how it was before. I like I think work should be a little bit of fun because like you spend time doing it. But yeah, I mean, at the same time, my work's sometimes not fun, so I have no room to talk. I mean, it happens. I mean, pff, fucking there. <laughs> you remember Jesus? Mm-hmm. Motherfucker would get high during breaks. Yeah. Like, and he'd tell me, like, he's like, I'm, he's like, I won't smoke like ever. Like, I'm done. I promised. I'll, I'll, I promised you, Marco. I won't smoke. That same fucking day, he comes to me. He's like, I broke our, I broke our promise. Like, cause I'm super high right now. I'm like this fucking motherfucker. That's bluff. <laughs> like, for you. Have you been uh, keeping up with the news? What the fuck is going on over there? Like, recent, recent, or, like, in the past six months? Because the past six months, there's been wild things going on. Like, Dude, shooting. Recent to the six months. Like, and, and just all of that. I I see it, and I'm like, what the hell happened? Oh, yeah, it's bad. Shootings, dr- a, a lot of drug arrests, uh, mm-hmm. DUIs, sexual assault rape like what what the hell is going on that book is not a safe town Uh uh-uh and they don't even like report half or like they don't put in the news half the stuff that happens Mm -hmm. but no so sometimes i feel guilty for leaving because it's like home but at the same time i'm like i gotta do my own thing so just wait until you are fully away like fully fully away maybe maybe a year then you might start realizing hey you know what it, leaving leaving was good but it, it all depends on on the person i mean i don't know i really miss my family but it's all right. I, I was legit gonna say it depends on the person because if you're a family oriented person more than likely they're they're gonna move back but it, man, yeah it, but it like, depends my boyfriend doesn't want to move to nebraska so I'm convincing him maybe Wyoming because it's a little bit closer. We'll then where did he like? Where did he was? I can't speak. Where was he originally from? He's from Colorado, Meeker, Colorado. Colorado? What the hell is he doing in Idaho? <laughs> he got a job. <laughs> oh, should just stay in Colorado. That shit. Right, that's a beautiful state. Paid, he's getting paid really well, so and it's good. I guess, I mean. And I just followed him around and <laughs> cleaned the house for him and cooked for him. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm still doing online school, so we're good. 
What are you doing online school for? Psychology. So is it for your bachelor's? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, through man. who? Oh, it's dying. It's all right. Say that again. Uh, through who? Like through? Uh, Shadron. Oh, you went to Shadron? Yeah. Because technically, I still get in-state. Because I lived there at the beginning of the year. Ooh, lucky. <laughs> lucky. I know. Wait, so how recent did you move to Idaho? Like, two months ago. Oh, so this is, like, freshly new. Yeah. Very fresh. And then, funny thing, right before I moved here, I had appendicitis. And so I got my appendicitis. Ooh. And I waited a week to recover, and then I moved up here. And so I couldn't lift anything for, like, six weeks. So my boyfriend had to lift all my stuff in the house. <laughs> Ooh. So it worked out in my favor, but not his favor. I had appendicitis my freshman year of high school. Huh. That's, I got it during the middle of a bis- of a basketball game. Like it was weird because that day I was I was just fine. It was against Layton as well. I was just fine. Like nothing was hurting. I was just in a normal day. Went home, ate some steak, didn't eat a lot because obviously you don't wanna you don't wanna yeah. puke. So just whatever. Still felt normal. And as the day just went, like I don't know, just I was feeling gassy, but I just said, oh, it's just gassy. But then, I don't know why. It just As closer as I got, I started feeling pain, but it wasn't in, it wasn't like, like, like gas pain. It was, or in my stomach, like it was outside. And I'm like, this is a different type of pain. Mm-hmm. And the game kept going on and it was just unbearable. And I had to tell Cotton, I'm like, hey, uh. It's okay if I can walk out because I do not feel good. Like, I am about to cry. Like, I'm hurting bad. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, you know, just walk out over there. And I just walked. And, yeah, well, it wasn't feeling good. And during, I think, halftime, he kept just um, joking around saying, what, do you got to poop and whatever. And after he's the like, game. No. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, no, I know what I need to. I, I don't need to right now. And then after the game, uh, I went home, and I showed my mom. I'm like, hey, it's hurting really bad right here. And she's like, it's inflamed. I'm going to take you to the hospital. And, yeah, I went there. The doctor's like, hey, good thing you came today, because if you arrived any time later, your appendix would have exploded. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fun. And, yeah, I just went through the whole procedure. I was out for like two days and I came back to school. <laughs> but it sucked. Like I, it, it I sucked time to do stuff. I get off when I after my procedure. I was in so much pain. Yeah, like I was so drugged up when I looked at my cut and saw how much blood came out. I wasn't even scared. I was like, oh, that's a lot of blood. And I just went back to sleep. Yeah. And like. And yeah, ever since that, my brother hated Cotton because Cotton really didn't give a shit. He really didn't care that I was in the hospital. Dang, that sucks. Yeah, because just said that I, you were fine. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, go in another room and plug in my phone. Is that okay? Oh no, you're good. You're good. But because so got my appendix removed, so I've had kidney stones in the past and stuff. And mm-hmm. so I, my mom was like, you probably just have kidney stones. Like, you're probably fine. And so I just waited it out. And then it was morning, and I couldn't even, like, get up. And I was like, Mom, it's bad. Well, actually, this was at 2 o'clock at night. And then I knew the night pharmacy tech at the hospital because I worked there. Mm-hmm. And he's not good at his job. So I was like, I don't want oh, to do my medicine. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to wait till they do shift change, and then I'll go in. Mm-hmm. And so... I, when I got to the hospital, it was, like, at 7 in the morning. And they are like, good thing you came in. Like, the same thing, like you said. Mm. And then they removed my appendix. And everybody knew me because I worked at the hospital. So, that was kind of embarrassing. But mm-hmm. um, when I got off, like, the procedure and I was, like, on the anesthesia and stuff, I mm-hmm. was so sad. I was, like, crying. And then I was apologizing. I was an emotional wreck. I was telling that lady, like, the nurse, all my problems. 
Então. Yeah. And that part. Yeah, so I was like, I'm so sorry. I mean, it, it sucked. It, it sucked having to, uh, I lived with that pain and barely able to walk. And they're like, you can't lift X amount of weight. And oh. I gained a, I gained a good amount of weight because I couldn't really, like, I couldn't even jog for a long time. Like, I had to walk. Yeah, I couldn't lift for six weeks. Oh, it was the longest six weeks of my life. Yeah, I, I, during PE, like I, I had to walk, and anything that involved more physical activity, I'm, I, I had to sit out, and I felt fat. I'm like, man, I feel lazy. I feel like you were done with basketball, like, basically. Yeah, like I, uh, they still, I was still on the team, uh, but I was more of just like. Uh, just kind of just there, the the bench warmer, just helping helping the fucking freshmen, not the freshmen, the junior high kids, uh, you know, with the waters and everything. But even then, I mean, I had to still watch how much I was carrying, and yeah, and and whatnot, and yeah. It, after that, kind of, I think after my sophomore year, I still stuck to basketball, but oh, I kind of wasn't really too much bond of it because of yeah. mainly of because of cotton mainly because of cotton but yeah um i just know whenever we played you guys like so i went to school in banner county for my first two years mm-hmm. and then i transferred to moral my sophomore or junior and senior year mm-hmm. but anyways at moral if we lost to you we would be in so much trouble <laughs> it was so bad really yeah, because like Banner time, County our, was it like one was it one of those like, okay, I mean, because yeah. with us with with Banner County, with any sport, if we lost to Banner County, we're like, we need some work to do. If you lose to Banner County, yeah, I don't there's play some that work. School anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, it was brutal. But anyway, that moral we lost you because we were all sick in basketball and the next day we were all sick the next day our coach had us run like till we puked even more and i was like uh. <laughs> good times i loved it though i love basketball so much i didn't mind basketball but uh i don't know i mean i guess just for my for my size and my height i mean it just oh man i wasn't good at it but i mean for moral i mean cotton just had that mindset of you know, we can be anyone uh, if you put your mind to it, which, I mean, is true. But just just like anything, you make those small mistakes, and that costs you the game. And so, yeah. Um, when, Did you go to school with my cousins when they were there? Yeah. Yep. Uh, wait, who's your co- cousins again? Uh, was it like, uh, fuck, uh, I know she dated Ephraim, Cheyenne. Yeah, Cheyenne, Greg, Brandon. Greg. And it's weird because, obviously, again, they all went to Banner County, just like you. And and it's funny because for football, oh, were they racist? We're like Brandon and Talon uh, racist as hell. <laughs> and we know yeah. it because they'd, they'd say it to our faces. Oh, were yeah. they racist? <laughs> and then they moved to Minotaire and bam. We were just best friends. Everyone was there was best friends. Mm-hmm. Same with James. James Sandberg. Oh, was he? He was worse out of all of them. And Wait. He, hmm? Worse as in what? James Sandberg. Like, oh, worse than like Talon and Brandon. <laughs> when, oh. when it came to racism, like it was bad. Oh yeah. Uh, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this on here. James, if you're listening, I'm sorry. But he got uh, he won't. He got suspended for basketball for. Um, Making a racist comment. <laughs> what do you say? And don't worry, I don't blur anything out. I don't give a shit what happens to the four I listeners. Agree. You're good. <laughs> the four li- listeners, please don't repeat this. Um, exactly. I think you said something about like this black person and cotton. I don't know. I don't really know the full racist. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah. I but think he, I remember that. They didn't have enough people, so they had to start him. And then they pulled him out and then played with four people the rest of the game. 
for basketball. <laughs> was was it oh was God. it against Sioux County? I don't remember. Cause I know Sioux County. Out of all the schools, Sioux County was the only one that had one black kid. We had a black kid. Jordan Burr. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say it. I th- I think oh, I remember man. hearing that. Oh man, I have beef with Sioux County though. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Really? Um, I got a concussion my junior year of playing basketball, and it like took me out my whole senior year. Holy crap! Yeah, because I was like brain dead. It's fine. Didn't you have multiple uh, concussions? Yeah, I had multiple, and then once I got this one, like I was done. I had to like stop going to school for two months, and then I had to go back to therapy and learn how to redo stuff, and it was stupid. <laughs> I'm a little bit smarter and more normal, but not really. Redo stuff? Like, I had to learn how to like remember and memory like cognitive tasks and stuff. Damn, it was that bad? Yeah. And apparently, oh my. my teachers were like, you were a completely different person once you got your concussion. Like, you didn't talk to anybody. You were super out of it. And I was like, what? I don't remember that. And they're like, yeah, you're not going to remember that. You had a concussion. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Holy shit. Damn. All because was... we used to be friends, too, and we still are. But, like, this girl just did a stupid foul. Or stupid charge. Yeah, stupid charge. No, it wasn't from Minotaur, right? No, it was from Sioux County. Sioux County? Yeah. They they did not like us. Sioux County hated us. Yeah, they didn't really like anybody, so. Yeah, they... Well, especially my senior year for football, when we went 7-2, and yeah, Mm -hmm. we did not. A lot of that... Hey, Springs was our, our opponents. They hated us. Yeah. They hated us. Even the other schools that we'd go against, they hated us. And then when it came to volleyball, no hate to their volleyball girls. Um like when when our volleyball girls would lose and the other team was like, Oh yeah, blah blah blah, you know, the shit talking like normal. Um yeah. you know, we the we'd see some of the dudes act tough as shit. I'm like, bro, chillax, you're you're five foot five, and you're a freshman, and you got no meat on you. Relax. Like, <laughs> like from the other team or your team? Well, from the other team. Oh. Yeah, and and uh, when I when I graduated, I kind of missed it. I'm like, damn, high school. Like it's finally growing up, mm-hmm. like how they say. And yeah, life hits you like a truck. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It does. Anything you do in yeah. high school does not get does not matter. No. And people like that peak in high school, they're like, what do I do now? <laughs> and that's why um most people already know his name. I don't want to say his name blatantly, but you probably know what happened with the whole um, you know, our star football player creating the whole sexual assault thing and it was head it was shared a lot because everyone knew about that and yeah like him yeah like him i mean he knew football it did not go i heard it not go well at shadron like i heard it he was just it wasn't his grades but it was his act on the field it was just not going well Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, that's kind of the only thing he's gonna be remembered at. Oh, not just that, not just football. Um, that hit that ruined like honestly that 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 ruined his uh uh the hell you call it reputation that ruined it bad. Yeah, yeah. Especially for how like, high his name was. I that. didn't even go to Medhair, and I knew about it. Uh, I say I uh, when I was seeing a lot of the comments, uh, a lot of the people that were commenting, I either knew them either because of of because of other people of oh I know this person from gearing because this because my cousin knows them or whatever and even they were commenting and I'm like holy shit everyone's commenting their their experiences I'm like oh my god like 
that's kind of sad and yeah scary. I don't know. And it's kind of scary when it's, like, someone you think is, like, a friend and that you know well and, yeah. I don't know. I didn't mind him, like, as a friend, but, like, I told, um... Uh, I don't, I know you don't know Caleb, but when I told him, not 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 the Caleb Gonzalez, it was a, it's a different Caleb. Um, I don't he, know. I know a lot of people. <laughs> oh well. Maybe not. Keep going. I don't think you. I don't think you know him because he wasn't in any sports, so I don't think you've seen oh. him. Yeah, I don't think you. Yeah. You know. And but when I was talking to him, um, uh, I was telling him how much I want to get. Oh, I just I just said a name. I'll I'll blur it out. Uh, about fifty nine minutes and a half. Okay, I'll I'll have to remind myself. Um, I want to. <laughs> there you go. Oh. I I I I want to get him on the podcast, but I don't know how well that'll take it. Cause I mean, I, I'll I'll own up to it. I did kind of shit talk a little. Um, yeah. I I commented uh he uh he needed we needed Chris Hansen here or something about Chris Hansen I commented and I'm like yeah I mean it's sad for him to see again a lot of his that he thought were fr- uh, were friends commenting that but in a way I, I kind of saw it I mean how he acted creepily um, yeah yeah. It's like something you don't notice until it's like brought out into the public kind of thing. Mhm. You're like, you're like, I knew it, but I didn't think that happened. Yeah. Um, you like to give people the benefit of the doubt, which I do all the time. Mhm. Uh, and I, who I felt bad, who I felt the worst for, was obviously Cheyenne, because I'm like, cause we would see what would happen in, in school, like we'd see how he'd, uh, how how he was, and I'm like, imagine your ex getting caught like that uh, just, just i know obviously she probably didn't give a shit about him i mean she was with uh, her boyfriend which you know sadly passed away um but at, you know at the time just imagine how how she felt like maybe like a, a a relief like they finally caught him yeah but then he's out and about he's still he's free and i'm like how how did that happen um the justice system is a little bit different. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like what what let him out so easily was probably because he openly admitted to it, saying yes, that was me. Like he just admitted to everything, mm-hmm. and I think that's what made it faster, and possibly that's what made him say, okay, well, he's not far. He's not fighting. He's not arguing. He is openly admitting everything. So. Maybe they think he's open to change. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I just know his reputation's done. And plus, I don't want to get sued if, if I do get him. And because the only reason why he got a good lawyer was because of, of his family. So I'm like, I don't want to mm-hmm. get sued because talking about it for, uh, I forgot what I forgot what the word's called. So I don't want to get screwed over. Yeah. No. Because I feel like he'd probably do that. Like yeah. Now, maybe. now how it is, I th- I think he would, out of like pettiness, he'd but say yeah. But even no. after this whole thing like went blew up, he still messaged me. I was dating Spud and he still messaged me, like, hey. And then I was like, dude, I have a boyfriend. Like, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. And I think I blocked him. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I I deleted him as a friend on Facebook and. I, ever since that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't talk to him. Yeah. But going back on, you know, the poor passing of, you know, Cheyenne's uh, boyfriend. I know you had someone that passed away too. Uh, oh, a, a good friend of yours uh, passed away. I mean, was that a shocker when that happened? Well, he was like, he's my brother, so. <laughs> oh. Not like just a good friend. Uh, actually, he's like, oh, I'm my, sorry. okay. I, was, I didn't my, know. I didn't no, you're know. good. You're good. No. He's my older cousin, but we were raised together, basically. Mm. You guys probably, you kn- probably knew him, Garrett. He plays Garrett who? Scrubs. 
What school did he go to? Banner County. But he's, like, older, so you might not know him. Uh, how old was he when he passed? 24. And he passed away this year, right? 2021. 2020. I was uh, 20 at the time, so tw- if he was 24 at the time, 25 now. So he'd be my brother's age. Yeah. So even if I saw him, well, not, not even my freshman year, because my brother graduated uh, my eighth grade year, so. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, because we graduated the same year, because I was in eighth grade when he graduated high school. Yeah, so. Um, no, it was a big shock. I I didn't expect it. I mean, I didn't, like, obviously, uh, like, read because it was just one of those. I didn't, I didn't know him, but, I mean, obviously, it affected you a lot. Like, if you don't mind asking, like, how did he pass? Like, what happened? Or if you don't mind me asking. Uh, oh, you're good. He committed suicide using a gun. Oh, yeah. That's not that's not pretty. So like, I don't know if you like there were several suicides after his. So every time someone else would do it, it just like opened my wound again. Mm-hmm. So. And it, he was just last year. like. Oh. It was just just a just a lot of like just personal situations that happened with him or yeah just, that just caused. Still, I just yeah I get triggered so much still about it. Like, when you, like... But it's okay. What? Like, when you, like, see a picture of him, or... Well, like, we used to do everything together. Like, I would say Garrett was, like, the closest person to me growing up, besides my, like, siblings. Well, even Mm -hmm. then, like, he was right there with them. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he was, like, my best friend. We did everything. So, honestly, everything I do, like, reminds me of him, sort of. That's sad as shit. Yeah, a little bit. It's always sad when people have to go that route. I mean, when... And, yeah. He was, like, he just got promoted as sergeant in the military, and, like, he has a kid, and he was, like, doing so good. And, like, he called me a week before, and he was, like, having issues with his ex-wife, and they were in the middle of a divorce and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they never got divorced, so she got all the money, that bitch. (laughs) Anyways. Uh Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, Riley, I'm finally over her. Like, I think I'm going to start dating again. And this was like a few months later. And I was like, oh, like, that's awesome. And so he was like, like asking me for dating advice. And he was like all giddy and like happy. And mm-hmm. yeah. And so then a week later, I was like, it was just horrible. And then it just, it just probably just went, it just went downhill from there. Yeah. And But I spoke at his funeral, which was super hard, but I felt like I needed to do it. Yeah. Yeah, because I know uh, when I uh, looked at your uh, TikTok to obviously check if you were active, uh, that's is that one of your most or the most liked TikTok of yours? I don't know. Some of them are liked a lot. Or not uh, viewed, I mean. Probably. I think it, I, the thing. I think I it was. I feel bad for posting about that stuff, but like it's just a way I had to agree. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't doing it to seek attention, but, like, so many people, mm-hmm. like, responded to that. And I was like, oh, I feel bad now. But I mean, because uh, obviously, you know, when I uh, messaged you about the whole mental health thing, like, how did that affect you, like, to your mental health? Like, when when you saw someone that close to you, obviously, leave and, like... A part of you was it a little bit mad at him for doing it, like knowing that he could have pushed, kept going, but because of him ending it, was there like a little bit of anger, like why did you do it? I knew you could go further. Or okay, I want to say like most people's reactions to that is to be mad because mm-hmm. they don't understand. Mm-hmm. But like I. Not, like, to that point, but I understand, like, how trashy mental health can do to you. Like, what it can do to you. Mm-hmm. And how, like, deep you can go to not get back up. And so, like, mm-hmm. I was never mad at him. Like, I should have been because now I have to live here without my best friend. Mm-hmm. And I'll have to, like, do things. And if I start crying, I'm sorry. But now I have to, like, No, it's all good. Without him. So, like, that's mm-hmm. the one thing I'm mad about. But I'm not mad 
why he left. Like, I understand to an extent, and I don't know. I just, I think it's better to just understand why and not be mad at why. Mm-hmm. It's it's always crazy just just the hu- how fascinating our human mind can get. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, like I feel like he's still with me every single day, and he's like, so I'm going into psychology, and I'm actually wanting to specialize in military personnel and mm-hmm. mental health. So like, he's like the reason for my my living now. Like he's mm-hmm. the reason I live. So. I hate that he had to die for it, and mm-hmm. I don't think it's fair. And, like, yes, I'm mad, but I don't know. I mean, God's still in our corner, and yeah. he's not suffering anymore. Yeah. He's up living life in heaven. And mm-hmm. The only sucky part is his kid now has to live without a dad, and his mom, I can't forgive her for some reason. Still working on that. It's very hard. Of, I can't, like, I'm not going to go deep into it, but there's some things that happened in that marriage that mm. shouldn't have happened. Yeah. I mean, you that don't have to tell me. I mean. lead to life. No, you're good. So I'm just trying to forgive her, but I don't know if that's going to ever happen. Yeah. I mean, it's it's always hard. It, I mean, with uh, my side of the family, uh, you possibly already know my cousin, Jackie. I mean, because of military and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Oh you know, yeah. Just yeah, just a lot of family stuff that happened back in Mexico and it kind of just separated a lot of our family. Mainly our parents, uh, my parents and aunts and whatnot kind of separated them, but just created a bunch of drama. So, I mean, I can understand like what you said of, you know, stuff that happened that it's hard for you to obviously forgive them, forgive, you know, in your case her. I mean, for stuff that happened with them, I mean, it's hard for them to forgive each other. And shit like that, but you know yeah. that that type, that type of shit is hard. Like, I know, like on some of your TikToks, I saw, of uh, uh, you know, a lot of them were you like crying because you know, it's about it's mental health and yeah. and uh, and shit like that. Uh, I had a I had a good question, but it sh- it, it went away about uh, mental health. Uh, I just mm. TikTok was my safe spot, like. It's one way I could connect with Garrett by, like, keeping his legacy alive, sort of, even though I was sad about it. But, like, mm-hmm. it was a way to grieve, and it still is sometimes. So. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, so, I'm like, obviously, I mean, you have your boyfriend and whatnot, but, like, when you're alone, um, yeah, <laughs> that little laugh already, uh, kind of, already kind of answers maybe what I was going to ask. But just like when you when when you're alone, do you feel alone as well, or do you feel like he is still right, right like by your side, or? I've actually that's funny that you asked that because lately I've been really struggling with the aloneness and the overwhelming thoughts and stuff, and I don't want to blame my boyfriend because he's in Texas a lot for his job, so I Texas. Am alone a lot. Holy shit! Yeah, so he goes there like every other month which sucks but good for him making money so he didn't know that when I moved up here so like I'm just like in a state I don't know anybody like still dealing with shit and stuff and so so you moved in with him yeah uh, and he didn't know that you moved in or or, no no no, no. I'm dumb you said (laughs) that he had to help you no no he didn't know that he'd be going to Texas a lot yeah and so, like, I don't want to blame him because he makes me super happy. But like, still, I get super sad when he, when I'm by myself, and it's just hard to get out of that phase. And then like, mm-hmm. I still get really sad over Garrett and Chase and Chance. And so like, I don't know. Sometimes I, sometimes my thoughts are like just too much, but I get through it. I mean, it happens. I mean, that's how sometimes I am too. I mean, for just obviously what I want to do in the future and uh and whatnot I mean I never read books like outside of the school I never really read a book to read and uh, it was just, I was just having just a lot of just you know mental just a lot of just mental drainage I mean a lot a bunch of you know external factors I mean 
uh, you know, just financial hardships and, you know, weight gain and just a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, it was just all crumbling down. And, and uh, I, I just, I kind of just needed like a boost. Like I need to see or read something that will kind of just help me keep getting up. And because again, with the whole financial uh, hardships, I was like, you know, I ne- I'm never going to get where I want to be. I'm never going to be a millionaire uh, by the age of 30. And just a bunch, just keep, just kept putting myself down until, you know, I read the book uh, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And not only was it talking about financial stuff, but then it was just also talking about, you know, the, like you, you know, the mind and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, I really, I try to apply it to everything, not just uh, financial, but it's just more like, obviously when I was down, like really down, I kept telling myself, you know, obviously just beating myself down. But then I, I once reading the book, I'm when it was talking about, you know, how, how are you going to get out of yourself and, you know, in certain type of situations. And so I kept asking myself, well, how how am I going to get out where I'm at mentally? Like, mm-hmm. where on how deep I am in with my mental state, how, if I want to be where I want to be, if I want to live a happier life, if I want to just feel better, how am I going to get out of there? And so I started applying a lot of hows and whys to, the how, to those hows. Like, why do I want to get better? Like, why do I want my mental state to be better? Why do I want this? Why do I want that? And if I find the why, now it's like, okay, how am I going to get it now? And I think that boost yeah. started, I guess, in a way, helping me because I'm starting to, like, podcast. I never really, I never heard a podcast. I heard one, and it was boring until one popped up on the TV, and I yeah. and I enjoyed it, and I, I decided to start one. Real estate. Mm-hmm. I've heard about real estate, but never never knew about it. A video popped up on YouTube. Here I am wanting to get my license. But, you know, as when you start something that you won't get a guaranteed check, like a a monthly check or a biweekly, whatever, it was still hitting me with more of the financial one where it's like, well, shit, I mean, I got bills to pay. I got this. I got that. Um, Mm -hmm. I can't go on vacation during the summers because I'm going to be worrying too much about money and I was just kept beating myself down, but I was just applying a lot of the hows and 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 whatnot, I'm like you know, just giving me I that do have step to forward. Add to that. What? I have something to add to what you're saying. So like, hmm. your mind is your worst enemy, is what I learned, but it can also be your most helpful tool. Mm-hmm. And so like, I heard a saying where, like, our brains are always in autopilot. So it's constantly, like, bringing us down. Like, that's just what we're designed to do. Like, almost like a flight or fight, but, like, more like a our brain shutting down because it doesn't think we can handle it. Mm-hmm. So, like, someone told me that, like, you need to change that autopilot to, like, manual. You need mm-hmm. to take control of the steering wheel. And, like, that's what you're doing by finding the why, not the. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, you're finding the why, not the how. Or was it the opposite? I don't know. Anyways, you're you're finding more details about like what you're why you're thinking like that, and that's a good mm-hmm. step. And and with uh and, and I mean with all of that too, um, because usually the why is when you wanna when you wanna do something, and someone else may ask you why do you wanna do it, and it all comes down to an insecurity, or or shit like that, and. Mm-hmm that's where you start finding the hows on how you sh- on how you can do it and yeah. and whatnot and and uh, this other book that i'm uh, more of an audio book because you know mm-hmm. i don't want to spend 25 bucks on a book yeah, fair <laughs> i got it for free so i said if i can find it for free i'll get it for free but anywho um it was talking about a lot about the matrix i mean about how you know just how the matrix is i mean the matrix is you you can in a way, I mean, I know stuff that ha- stuff happens that is out of your control, obviously, but it's how you, it's however, it's how you control your matrix. It's how you 
control your outcome because you can be that person where whatever happened externally that's your that that's the blame like all all this happened that's why I'm where I'm that's why I'm yeah I'm a drug addict instead of taking that and saying I don't want that like yeah like You're someone control, it, right? like if someone's health was bad look at why was it bad oh they were very overweight I'm scared of that I you can like right now I'm overweight and I'm like I don't want to have those heart problems I don't want to have those breathing problems um mm-hmm. But it's still one of those. I mean, just just with anything. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, you in psychology. I mean, what was one of those big ones that you were learning that you were starting to, I guess, apply outside of class that you were starting to realize, holy shit, like maybe I need to start doing this more, or maybe I need to. I don't know. Like, talk about this more, or. Yeah, I see where you're going. Uh, um. There's a lot of concepts in psychology that I like to apply to my everyday life. I just think mm-hmm. psychology as a whole is super good, even though if you're not going into like it as a career. It's just good to know about your mind and brain and how it works. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm trying to think of a concept. And my brother went to psychology too, but I don't. I mean, he gave me notes. God knows where I put them. So, I mean. <laughs> no, I am just brain dead and tired after a long day work. But let me think of something. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm learning more about, like, the brain parts right now. So that's what's, like, flashing in my head and how, like, each brain part, like, works on a certain memory or, like, mm-hmm. task. But, like, I guess. Okay, so, like, I'm learning about, like, how your external factors, like, influence you. Like, family influences you in a big way and, like, what you do what you hang around and like how that influences you Mm -hmm. but like i don't know i just i think it's fascinating how like certain situations make you think a certain way and what you were saying is like trying to learn how to break free from that is like really hard because you're not Mm -hmm. used to it you're not like we're very repetitive people so trying to make good habits and stuff like takes a lot that does not teach you or help you in anything, but that's just something that came to my brain. I mean, uh, it's always good to be talk about that type of stuff. Like, with one of my goals of obviously where I want to be, um, I know a lot of, like, the people in the finance say, um, one way that I can that can help you see, make you want to reach that goal more is, you know, maybe hang out at the bars where a lot of those type of people go. Maybe go golfing where a lot of those people go. Maybe rent a car like uh, with one of my dream cars is a Tesla. And over in uh, Sasu City, Council Bluffs, Council Bluffs, Iowa, they have a Tesla dealership that you can rent. No, you're not really rent, just test drive uh, Teslas. Yeah. And it's like driving those, getting yourself in that type of environment will help you because if you are stuck in the the i want to say like full all negative but if you are stuck in just that environment of non-breaking free and you have and if you want to live a different life start going to places that more of those type of people go to then you'll start realizing hey then you'll start kind of thinking like them more that's why um, i know right that's because i know I, i read a thing or saw a thing uh, that said, um, whenever you're in a room, never be the dumbest one there. Uh, not not yet, never. Always be the dumbest one there because you want to be. You want to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, because if you surround with people that sounds mean to say, but if you say dumber than you, that you will never learn anything, or you might learn, you might go down that like down like that, like you might learn like that. But if you surround, if you become the dumbest in the room and surround yourself with people who are greater, who are better than you, you that you start learning what they yeah. do. Like again, like what do a lot of people do? Wake up early, go to their, go to the gym for their mental health, meditate. Meditation is a big one. You meditate for thirty minutes, get just release all that negative energy, all those negative thoughts, a a bunch of shit like that, and. Yeah. Surround yourself with people that you want to be like. And also, like, that ties back into what we were talking earlier. So, like, if you are the smartest person in the room, that's almost like peaking in high school. Like, you're not going to want to get better because you're like, 
ooh, this is great, what it feels like to be on top, but really in another room next to you, there's another person with that's dumb that's actually getting smarter than the smartest person in the other room. Mm-hmm. That's... Uh, I know it. I know it's an... I. Because it's, it's a podcast uh, that I'm also listening to. I mean, Andrew Schultz, I mean, he's a comedian, but, I mean, mm-hmm. comedians can be, are the ones that hide their uh, their trauma with, with comedy, obviously. Yeah. And um, Mr. Beast is on there, and he says something about, um, something about, being dumb until you're smart or something kind of kind of the same thing that i applied i mean they were talking about like youtube like views like the analytics and whatnot but he says um like when you're when you have five views on a video people think you're dumb because it's not going add five more zeros now people think you're smart and i mean Mm -hmm. i know it has nothing to do with like kind of what we're talking about but i mean how i when i when just the mic like when I was hearing it, uh, I was like, you know, you, it, I mean, it's just like anything when you think about it. I mean, people are gonna doubt you because again, like the four plays that I get, people might not want to be on it because they're like, eh, like you're a nobody. Until you add four or five more zeros, then it's like, oh. Yeah, and those I want, people I want that to be. get to the four zeros, they were in your spot or my spot as a CNA. Like I'm not a psychologist yet. They're in our mm-hmm. shoes at one point in time, but they were the ones that decided to keep going up. Like other people power. might just quit and they never get to see that. And then the they're power. the ones that also make fun of people. So it's like, what the heck? The power of consistency. Gotta yeah. be consistent. It just I mean, it, it's like with the gym. I, you don't you don't see res, you don't see results your first day you go. You gotta be consistent. That's, and that's funny because consistency is like my favorite word. I mean that's what it can because if you have the power of manifestation and then uh consistency because that's also another thing I mean as corny as this line is of of uh the guy who founded Disney um when he said if you Walt Disney if you can dream it you can do it yeah I'm done I'm dumb okay but what he's no, when he said if, no, if you can dream it yeah, you can do no, it okay yeah okay. <laughs> uh, and it's, no, I mean, that I'm applies. Saying be dumb we're oh, talking about. Anyway, continue. okay, I guess. But <laughs> that's that ties into the power manifestation. If you can dream yourself doing those things, that tells you that you can do it. I mean, yeah. with whatever you, you want to do, you can only, you know, your limits. Like, or no, how does that go? I don't know. What I'm trying to say is you control your limits. You know what you can do. You know how far you can go. Like, Sometimes you uh, need a boost. Mm-hmm. You know that, but... Like this... Okay. I, I, what? No, keep going. Oh. oh. Again, with this book that I read, uh, it's called The uh, The Power of One More, and again, they were talking... He's describing that as uh, as temperature. Like, you you have your temperature set at a specified temperature. Like, let's say 75 degrees. That is your set temperature. Whenever you hit that threshold, that is your temperature. Like that's where you are comfortable. Because just like with anything, mm-hmm. if you're in a room and you like the room at a comfortable temperature, that's that's your life. You are comfortable at that temperature. And if, but if you see how it is and you don't want to be there, and if you try to shoot for more, but your temperature is still set at that bar, you're never, you're always going to keep going back to that t- set temperature. You gotta, you have to change your temperature in or it, in order to stay. I mean, where you want to be. I mean, and no, I've read, I, I read and pay attention to a lot of that type of stuff because, again, where I was at badly, like where I was at mentally, like really mentally struggling. I had to find ways and yeah. and kind of look into that stuff and say, okay, what can I do and what are ways that I can speak to myself that that can help me? And, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I look into a lot of that type of shit. I mean, no, I do too. I love like analogies, like what you're saying. Like I love those because mm-hmm. so, I can actually apply it to my own life. And mm-hmm. I mean, 
it, it always fascinates you because someone might have a different analogy and you realize, you know what, that's true. Like you think about it, you're like, holy shit, that's true. Or or someone might be someone that you randomly talk to might be going through the same shit that you're going through. And they're but they're the way they're coping or like their analogy, like you speak and they're like, oh, that's the same way that I think. I mean, I do this and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. I never thought about that. I mean, it's that's... crazy. Like, if you're open to other people's, like, opinions and, like, how, like you said, their coping mechanisms, like, that just puts you so much up farther of healing mm-hmm. and stuff. If you mm-hmm. are willing to try out what they do. It mm-hmm. might not necessarily work, but just being open. I mean, it's always good to listen, too. I mean, because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know if you've probably have heard, I've heard the saying as well, of hurt people hurt people. And so when people are hurt, they're going to keep hurting people. And it's always sad because, I mean, someone who can be a bitch is a bitch for a reason. It's because yeah. shit happened to them. And you, you want to open. Yeah. Yeah, like open. you want to talk to them about that. You want to, you know, you, you want to help them. But some people just, no, there's just, they don't want to talk. They don't want help, which is very hard. I mean, I've. I'm like that too. I don't, it's hard for me to ask for help. And again, that's where the mental health comes in because they don't, they're not asking for help. And that's, and yeah, they struggle. That's, it's hard because like people that don't ask for help, like for instance, my cousin was like the happiest person in the room. He was always the one trying to help other people and like he would never ask for help. But like, just being a person that can read into that kind of stuff that's like what i want to do i want to be able to read into people that are too scared to open up and like just share that we're like not the same but like i can relate to you kind of Mm -hmm. in a way like it's okay to open up because not that i know what you're going through but like i can be there for you i can listen and Mm -hmm. and that's all and you always need to find someone that listens because uh if if you find someone that's going to keep blocking you out, like you want to talk and they tell you, you talk too much, like you talk a lot or, or they just kind of just keep trying to back you out. It's then you're like, well, that that's where a lot of people, you know, then say, I asked for help. I didn't get help. So that's why I don't ask for help. And mm-hmm. I mean, and in a way, I mean, I, I, again, I, that has happened to me before. I mean, I talk a lot as you may guess that's why i started a podcast because i talk a lot um but i mean i've had people say you know you talk a lot or just completely change the topic and i'm like oh fuck whatever i had to say right but and <laughs> don't change like what i'm saying is don't change yourself because someone doesn't like it oh i mean i know that i mean that's yeah like, if you want to talk a lot talk a lot that's totally fine but like you fuck. said find someone that's willing to listen that's yeah, uh that that negative energy you always wanna because you know because even with someone who even a coworker talks to you and just to completely talks to you and you listen that I mean they appreciate it because then you could you could see them you know just you can see them light up I mean that yeah. uh, it's I mean, you always gotta feel surround you know just like in their end they need to surround themselves with people that that are willing to listen and you're there to listen and they and they appreciate mm-hmm. that I mean, especially when it's like dark shit and you know, like what of like suicide and shit like that i mean mm-hmm. stuff like that is hard to, they need to know one person will listen yeah and and it's hard i mean even if you are that one person to listen and when you uh when you listen to them and let's say you went through the same exact thing and you got out of it you're like but you always like you what whatever worked for you may not work for them because everyone's different so you may say oh i did this you know uh because i know you go to the gym a lot so you're like i went to the gym i mean that helped me a lot and i did this and this and this they might say well i don't like i don't want the gym i don't like the gym i don't want to meditate like meditate like i because meditation is this and this and this and they don't want to do a lot of stuff and you're like well fuck i I just don't know what to do now. I mean, but you want to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's. Yeah. So it's just. 
Well, shit like this always uh, fascinates me, and hearing it from other people, uh, like with the podcast, it always just makes you think, oh shit, that's true, or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or other shit. But I mean. my stomach is starting to growl. <laughs> I mean, my girlfriend, uh, she was texting me, wondering why I'm ignoring her her texts. <laughs> Well, I did she'll see this. You, I did appreciate you asking me. It means a lot. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Well, because I, again, I, I was like, I need to get someone because, you know, when, because I post, well, I've been changing up a lot of the scheduling and whatnot. I kind of like but, look on how you do it. But. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been uh, changing the scheduling uh, here and there, but I'm like, People can only hear me talk, like, as a solo episode for so long until it's like, oh, it's another episode of him. And, you know, like, and so I'm just trying to get people. So this will be out Sunday, uh, 11 my time, so 10 your time. Again, I changed times again before. It used to be 10, 9 for you, but just trying to change some shit around. Um, It will be everywhere, YouTube, Spotify. Apple Dang. Podcast, Pandora, <laughs> iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, everywhere. So you can listen cool. to it everywhere. All right. Uh, you can rewatch the uh, the video if you want. Uh, I'll t- I'll tag you when I post it. Uh, I'll tag you so it can make sure you get the message, the notification that you know Perfect. that it went through and and whatnot. But do you want to do the closing? Do you want any inspirational words from our dear psychologist? Oh. Um, to any of the listeners listening, I say <laughs> <laughs> if you do need help and you do feel sad and you do feel down, like I know it's hard to reach out, but just just reach out. And like you'd be surprised people are so willing to listen most of the time. I'm just saying, like, reach out. That's all I'm up. In the description, I'll probably put the national hotline, the number. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, that's what I did for uh, mental health day. I also put the number down and shit like that. Just in case, again, anyone hears it, yeah. they know. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, like, I just, I don't know. Life is so hard. It is, like, it's stupid hard. But the fact that, like, so many people are willing to listen and help, you would be so surprised. Like, I don't know. People don't realize that until they're gone. And that's the shit part of it. And it's always worse when uh, you want to help someone and they're the ones that that take their life. And then that that goes back to you because then you feel like you weren't you didn't do enough. Oh, yeah. And then now that beats you down. And now you are getting deeper in that hole and and then someone to, else needs to yeah. come and, at least do another closing thought i'm sorry but if oh, you good. are that person on that situation where someone does commit suicide and you were there for them as much as you could don't blame yourself like it's so easy to blame yourself i blame myself all the time but like things happen for a reason sadly and all we can do is like learn and take from that and cherish those memories and like i don't know just don't blame yourself is another thing for the other people listening. There you go. Nice <laughs> closing. Right. Nice closing. But yeah, yeah, again, like I said, uh put it I'll put it out Sunday. And okay. you can hear it any if you ever want to hear it, you can hear Perfect. it on any of those. I and enjoy talking to you. Enjoy talking to you too. And I gotta remember about like fifty nine well for my end, because I know when you joined it was recording, but for me it's uh different um so for me the time frame was about i think close to 59 minutes 20 seconds that i need to look at to uh bleep out a name just in case i mean for safety yeah yeah just for just for safety but (laughs) exactly but all right well uh you have a good one say hi to spud for me if he doesn't know me say (laughs) he's my coworker. but all right Oh, OG. <laughs> OG, you're uh, one of the OGs. There you go. All right. OG, OG Rye. Rye bread. Okay. I'll call you Rye bread. There you go. Bye.
that's funny because that's what my OG nickname was. But anyways. Hey. I love it. There you okay. go. All right. Have a good one. All right. Time. Peace, peace. See ya. Bye.